So with me this morning, I'm going to have Dr. Stephen Bebevsky, who's a cardiothoracic thoracic surgeon of South Florida, and he is with me on Skype. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Dr. Bebevsky, um, we are very excited to speak with you about a new procedure that saved the life, saved the life of an eight-year-old boy. But before we go into that, I have to ask, doctor, what do you specialize in? So I specialize in performing uh, complex uh, heart operations on infants, uh, children, and adults who were born with congenital heart defects. So um, what people uh, tend to forget is that the children that were operated on um, 20, 30 years ago when we first started doing these types of operations, um, those have all grown up and have become adults. But um, the right person to handle those problems is... Um, not really an adult cardiothoracic surgeon because they deal with a completely set of um, different set of problems, and so we do also operate on on adults that have uh, that were born with congenital heart defects. All right, could you tell us um, what's the most common type of case you encounter? I think the most common case that we deal with is closing holes in the heart. So a ventricular septal defect that's a hole between the lower pumping chambers and um, an atrial septal defect, uh, a hole between the upper uh, chambers, the receiving chambers of the heart. And what was the issue in the case of the eight-year-old boy? Oh, so that's a really interesting story. Um, this is a child uh, that's born with what, you know, in common terms is called being born with half a heart. Um, it's hyperplastic left heart syndrome where the um, left side of the heart, the side of the heart that pumps for the entire body, doesn't develop. The chamber becomes rudimentary and just like a little nubbin um, on the hanging on to the right side of the heart, which normally pumps for the lungs. And for these children to survive, they undergo an operation called the Norwood operation, where we essentially um, take the right side of the heart, which normally only pumps to the lungs, and we convert that to pump to the body, and we reroute uh, the rest of the circulation so that the blood flow to the lungs is sort of uh, stolen from that general circulation. So essentially taking one pumping chamber and doing the job of two. Those children uh, can do very well in their lives uh, depending on the um, type of um, heart defect that they came with and also depending somewhat on, on the variability within themselves. So some can go very into adulthood and do very well, but unfortunately others, by the time they're approaching their teens, uh, early 20s, the heart pump starts to fail. Um, that heart pump, being the right side, was designed only to pump to the lungs, and it's been pumping to the body for so many years, and it doesn't hold up. And so for those children, they develop heart failure, um, like in this eight-year-old boy, and we um, list them for heart transplants. Unfortunately, if um, the child's pump is really sick, um, they're not going to make it. Uh, waiting for a heart. A heart can sometimes take days, weeks, months, or even over, over a year before you get an offer. And so how do you support a child who's got a very sick heart pump in that time? And in that instance, um, we've gone to using um, artificial heart pumps to support them, and that's the story of this eight-year-old boy. And are there risks involved in the procedure to um, implant one of these heart pumps? There is. Um, you know, the entire thing is really fraught with danger. Um, remembering that um, a lot of what we do is new technology, and in children who are particularly small, uh, there is really only one heart pump um, that is approved for use in small children, and that's the Berlin heart pump. It's an excellent pump, and it does a great job supporting children, but we know from our experience worldwide now in hundreds of cases that the stroke rate is around 30%. So you have a risk of, of this child coming out with some level of stroke. And fortunately in children, most of those strokes tend to, they tend to recover from them. But uh, nonetheless, that's just one of the risks. Bleeding um, anywhere in the body, wound infections, um, uh, thrombosis in the pump. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. And so we try to keep the pump in for as little as possible and get that heart in, which changes, it's a total game changer. Well, in this case, um, the risk did not play a factor and the procedure was successful, you know, which is really great news and really exciting to understand and to know that um, something that 
something was done and was able to be done to extend and save the life of this eight-year-old boy. And so what was the recovery time like and what, what was his quality of life after the procedure? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, um, this is a child that before we uh, implanted his heart pump, um, he was essentially unable to get out of bed, was unable to tolerate uh, taking anything by mouth. So when you swallow food and, and digest food, the stomach needs increased blood flow. When that heart pump is so sick that it can't even increase the demand to the supply to meet that demand, these children get very sick and they vomit with taking any food in. Days after putting the pump in, this child was able to eat food, get out of bed, walk around, and he ended up having the heart pump for um, almost six months um, after the implant. And there are some great videos that the nurses took of us racing cars around the intensive care unit. So that's how much his quality of life changed um, after the pump. And of course, once you get the heart transplant, um, we expect uh, these children to go home and go back to school two weeks later. It's that's, just a, a, an amazing thing to see. That is great news. And how is he now? He's doing fantastic. In fact, we are now planning a fundraising event that we do every year, um, the Diamond Angels, uh, that's done here in South Florida for uh, children. And he will be one of our guest speakers. Okay, that is excellent news. And I'm really <laughs> excited for all that is ahead in the future. And, you know, thank you, Dr. Bebevsky, for sharing with us. And thank you for your contribution to the medical field and all that you're doing. And I do wish you continued success in all your work. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me, and I look forward to getting back there for some shark and bait. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. That was Dr. Be Stephen Bebelski, cardiothoracic surgeon in south of Florida.